A few weeks ago, I did a demonstration in which I set up an example project site, celiactive.com, and I used percentages and I used uh, a two column layout with floats and I used background images and I did my best to try to make the site uh, flexible. So I used percentages instead of pixels and things so that as we would resize the site, uh, the window, the viewport, things would um, flex to match uh, our viewing um, window here. So the trouble is when we got down to about 730 pixels things started to get a little bit ugly. So here we would have um, our uh, headers start to flow out of their columns. Uh, we would get down to the point where our um, text here would be running over our logo and things would just start to look way too squished. So at the time we constrained our page to a minimum width of 730 pixels. Well at the time I said that we would take a look at what we could do to fix that in a later week. So here we are on that week and let's take a look at some of the things uh, that I've done to make this work. So um, here is the same website on my own computer and as I size it down we get down to about our minimum width and then our sidebar column jumps down to the bottom up at the top our um, font sizes adjust a little bit and then as we get down closer to 320 pixels ish or about 500 pixels where things really start to get squishy again again we have uh, a change where all of a sudden we move our logo up our, our uh, title um, drops down, gets a little bit bigger, and we adjust some of our margins, and uh, we do some more here with adjusting our featured products uh, column. And then we eventually set a minimum uh, width of 300 pixels, which should be uh, below the resolution, the standard resolution of an iPhone, which is at about 320 pixels. So just to show you exactly what we did to make that possible, I had to make some changes in the HTML. One thing I did is uh, originally in my background image, this logo was actually affixed to the background image itself. Well, I got a separate logo and I actually put it in the HTML itself uh, with the class of logo. And then in my styles, I adjusted uh, that logo to uh, be a width of 15% uh, with a maximum width of 140 pixels and I floated it to the left so that way now uh, the logo image resizes as we go and then I can move it around separate from the text a bit. Another thing that I did uh, as I got closer to um, 320 pixels as I noticed that this about us a link here uh, at one point broke kind of funny right here so that we'd have about us and then the us would drop down so I had to add a non-breaking space and that's actually what the non-breaking spaces are for that's why they're called non-breaking added a non-breaking space in between about and us so there's that character and that keeps uh, that makes the browser treat this all as if it's one word and so it pops down. And that was all that I did in terms of changes on the actual HTML. Everything else I did was changes in the CSS. <clears throat> okay, so um, in our CSS, I didn't make a whole lot of changes to our standard CSS up here because um, I didn't really have to, that was already there. The only thing I did was play around a little bit with styling that image, like I mentioned earlier. But as I got down to the bottom, I started to put in media queries. So this week's chapter starts to talk, introduces you uh, to media queries, and this is the syntax for it. So there are a couple of different ways you can do it. You can put a media query in the header of your um, HTML page where you call out a separate style sheet or you can use the same style sheet and just put your media queries in here and that's in my mind easier 
because you're only loading one style sheet for one, so it's less for the browser to load. And for two, it's easy to look up and down and see what your styles are and, and things. Um, and it's important that you put your media queries, your CSS for your media queries, below um, the CSS that, that uh, is for the larger sizes because of the cascading nature of CSS. It's going to um, override at the bottom uh, styles that are at the top. Or yes, it's going to, the styles at the bottom are going to override the styles at the top is what I'm trying to say. So what we have here is we have a rule in CSS that says if the media is a screen and the maximum width, the width is 740 pixels or smaller, then apply all of these styles. And these styles are going to overwrite the styles above. And if this, if the, uh, if this rule isn't met, if the screen is wider than 740 pixels, then the browser will just ignore these styles. So at 740 pixels and below, uh, we go in and we actually change our background image to one that's uh, cut a little bit shorter and sized down a bit. Um, we change our font sizes, so we go for a smaller font size in our header. Um, both of our header uh, um, text styles. We had a, a title and then a tagline, you remember. So here's the, the heading one and then here's the, the tagline. Uh, and then we also adjust our regular heading one. This gets smaller here because that was starting to look too big as we were larger. You see it actually resizes a couple of times. So here we go. There it's a little bit smaller. Um, I adjusted our uh, paragraph text to be a little bit smaller. Our, and then the main thing that I did here is on our div. So up above here I had the div for the lead article, which uh, in this case was this box. This was the lead article div. And then this was the featured products div. And originally we had these, uh, you know, at our full resolution we have the lead article at 76 percent with the featured products div at 15 percent with some margins and padding and then one is floated left and one is floated right when we get uh, to 740 pixels or below what we do is we just get rid of that um, side by side business and we set the lead article to be a width of 92 percent so it spans across most of the page and the same with featured products. We set those at the same width um, and uh, and adjusted the padding and the margin a little bit to match so I had to do some trial and error and play with this to see what exactly would work but uh, but here it is this is um, 92 percent the reason I went for 92 percent is so that I could play with the padding a little bit on the uh, right, add some additional padding and, and margin and, and everything would add up to 100%. Um, and so here we go, now what happens is our featured, featured products drops down. Then I also, uh, originally in my CSS up here at the top, I realized that I had been styling uh, the image tag. That wasn't working so well when I got down here um, with this layout because uh, if I just took and kept modifying that image tag I had issues with the text um, not wanting to drop below the image so I looked back at my HTML and happily I had been actually putting a separate div around the image in its caption with the class of product item and I hadn't been using that div earlier but I must have anticipated needing it as I would size down so I was able to come into my CSS and um, for my 740 pixels and below um, width I was able to style uh, that div with a class of product item and give it a set width and height and float it left and give it a margin. So that's how we're able to have, um, you know, as we're larger here, these are stacking up on top of each other, they're flexible. Uh, we have images of different heights. It's not a big deal because they're just stacking up on top of each other vertically. But once we start 
um, laying them up next to each other horizontally, it looks kind of funny if they aren't in equal height. So I needed to set that div and and uh, and uh, make sure that all of the uh, the images here in the featured products, all of the images in their captions had a set width and height. And then I just had float left so that as we go smaller and smaller, everything um, kind of just uh, adjusts downward. Okay, then we hit a point at 500 pixels where things started to break again. So I made some additional adjustments, including going a little bit smaller on our line height, on our headers, a little bit smaller on the headers themselves, a little bit smaller again on the paragraphs, um, and then on the, uh, the actual header element, uh, I changed uh, to put a text alignment of center I took the float off of our logo image and gave it a set width and then um, let's see again size down the H1s up that were in our header tag um, messed with the margins a bit and shrunk those down and sized down our text a little bit on our anchors and uh, so there you can start to see as we scroll up, how we hit, here we hit 500 pixels and bam, there's our new style. Our image is no longer floated, it's up on top and everything centers and I adjusted the line height on our navigation a little bit so that when About Us pops down it doesn't look super bad um, and then adjusted our margins a bit so that it's smaller and uh, likewise here just made sure that we were centering our featured products at this point and yep that's what we have going on there we had to make one more change at 445 pixels I had to um, this is actually with the featured products with the div items I wanted to clear my float left and um, well, I wanted to get rid of my float left so I did float none and then center these images because you know out here we're floating left so everything flushes over to the left but once everything stacks on top vertically I want it to be centered and so that's the one style I put here at 445 pixels which is about the point where uh, these images no longer stack up side by side and eventually all just go into uh, a complete vertical stack so at that point I wanted to center things. So you can see the power here of media queries. So we're able to start from something that we have out here, size it down as we get smaller, we're able to pop things into different locations. And now if we're assuming this is an iPhone at 320 pixels, and you can see up at the top here in my title bar it's telling me what the pixels are so let's get this to about 320 up here so this is about the iPhone resolution and you can see that it generally works here um, it's actually a little bit uh, a little bit wider than I'd like I probably want to go adjust that some more but um, you get the idea so Anyway, that is how you use media queries, and uh, enjoy.